So in this segment, I'd like to go over the priming system. And so I'll kind of start on this side with the control assembly. You'll notice that you have a dial from zero to 10, and this is our frequency or speed. Uh, the secondary adjustment of the agitation or how hard it's shaking is underneath the motor itself accessed with a 3 16 Allen. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this cover out of the way so everyone can get a good view. And I'll kind of go over some of the other adjustments that we can make. So one of the things we can adjust right away is the center of our bowl has one bolt right in the middle, eighth inch, that allows us to rotate the bowl in a circle. We want to use this to our advantage to create a good gap. Something else that we can do is if it's not level, we're able to remove the bowl and adjust the level of this platform, which is held by three rods that you can easily loosen two of the bolts at a time and raise or lower this platform to ensure that our bowl is level. Now once we have that set, we would put our bowl back on. We want to create a gap between the ramp and the hood to ensure that it's not touching, but it's also not far enough away that a primer can fall out. Once we've got that set, we tighten it down. Now we've got a secondary adjustment on the entire platform. By loosening the four nuts on the bottom, I'm able to rotate the entire primer assembly, motor and all, around to where I need it to, to create that same gap. Our end goal is to make a nice transition from the primer bowl to the primer ramp. And so once I've got that gap set again, I can tighten these down and they're on rubber isolator grommets so they don't require a wrench. Now there is another adjustment on the hood itself. Via a screw underneath, I can easily turn this hood left to right to line up better with the ramp as well as the ramp height adjustment, which is available right here on this, and I can raise or lower it to make sure that everything is lined up for a good smooth transition. Now moving down the ramp, you'll see our primer call sensor. Something important to note is we wanna make sure that that's not touching the bowl. And to give you an example, the primer bowl will not vibrate properly if that is touching. So we wanna make sure that it's free and clear. Now the call sensor's job is to allow the motor to engage until primers are up to the point and once it sees an obstruction, it will turn the motor off. Now if you are receiving this as new uh, and you're putting this all together and A or B, A it's not turning on or B it's not turning off, it could be as simple as just the wire seating itself. You could also remove the two 16th screws, look underneath for an obstruction and verify operation, reinstall and you should be good to go. I want to point out that the primer call sensor cable is what plugs into the back of your controller box. And so make sure you don't plug it into anything else. Now, your ramp over time will require some maintenance. And by maintenance, I simply mean wiping it off. If you have primers stalling on the way down, uh, eventually that will happen. Then it's very simple to remove the screws and the cover along with the call sensor and just use a nice microfiber cloth, wipe that down with isopropyl alcohol, and allow it to dry. When you put it back together, you'll notice your primers will go down extremely fast again. And so that is something that over time you will have to do. I will give you an example of someone brought to my attention that they used a pipe cleaner and they put it down the hole, uh, which allowed them to save a couple minutes of not having to remove these items. I'll also tell you that this same individual had called me and said that his primer ramp sensor was not working, only to find that a piece of pipe cleaner was left in there. So it cost him a couple minutes down the road. So the preferred method is to remove it, clean it properly, and reinstall it. Now moving on to the primer disc assembly, I'm gonna show you how to remove this cover and do a couple of maintenance items in here. If during your loading session, you run into powder spillage or a primer decides to come in pieces, you're gonna to wanna to access this and be able to clean it out. So simply remove the cover with this 1 16th Allen and now you're going to want to remove the three bolts that hold the disc down using a 3 seconds Allen key. And so by removing these, and I'll use my Allen like a hook, I will grab the disc and simply pull up and out. And this allows me access inside to perform any kind of maintenance, cleaning, or if I had uh, pieces of a primer, I can remove them in here. Now, another example is you may have an obstruction. If a primer were to come down sideways and it gets stuck underneath this, which is called the side plate, then you would have a couple of options. One option is to reach down underneath the priming system to the cam tire and push forward, which may allow you to 
push that sideways primer to the uh, primary insertion station and lift up with your finger on the punch itself. You can then correct it. Now, alternatively, if that's not possible, you would have to do what we're doing now, which is remove the disc assembly, correct the malfunction, and then reassemble. I want to point out now that the disc is out, how we can adjust our resting punch height. And so what that is, is a relation to the silver insert, the bushing, and the punch itself. If that punch is sitting too high or too low, it could create issues. Uh, for example, if it's too high, it's like a speed bump as the primer comes in. If it's too low, it could allow the primer to kick sideways and be inserted that way. Another example of it being too low is if the primer is upside down, it could get caught there and cause the machine not to index. So if you notice underneath our primer rocker, we have an adjustment. And so we would simply use a 564 silent key. We're able to loosen this and by sliding this back and forth, it allows our punch or the resting punch height to raise or lower as needed. So I'm gonna set it as flush as possible lock that in place and we can verify that just by looking at the smooth transition underneath and so with that set and everything cleaned out i'm going to reinsert my disc and so what you're going to want to do is tuck it downward so that the edge of the disc catches underneath here and give it kind of a slight rotation at the time and so i encourage you to repeat that process as many times as needed so you get the hang of it tuck it in now to reinsert and align this properly we're going to put our screws in place, but not tighten them all the way down yet. So we put them almost all the way down. And at this point, we're gonna to wanna to use the move to bottom feature, or you could do this by putting the press in neutral and moving it to the bottom. So I have a small amount of play. I'm gonna to go to my setup menu, and I'm gonna press move to bottom. What happens is the alignment pin comes down through the top and the punch is coming up through the bottom, lining the disc for us before we final tighten these down. One word of the wise is don't over tighten these bolts. If you notice my Allen key is facing this way, not this way. If you over tighten them, it will be very difficult to get them back out in the future. So now we check our work by pressing run and make sure that it doesn't jump, just like the shell plate indexing adjustment. Now another adjustment I'd like to point out is this primer side plate. So it's got a screw exposed on the outside that's easily viewable and it's got one underneath there. Now it's a 1 16th size screw and just by loosening the outer it does give you the possibility or the capability to move this away as you can see or closer to the disc itself. We don't want to create drag or resistance but we want to get it as close as we can. Now this thing's job is to take a primer that's coming around and prevent it from flipping sideways. Sometimes the cause of a sideways primer is simply that this side plate is either worn out or it's too far away. So we want to get it as close as we can to the disc without creating resistance. Now we have made this disc uh, a safety feature of being spring loaded and I'll give you an example with the press running. If I just create drag or resistance on it you'll notice that the press stops, I get a digital clutch error and I need to jog up to get off of that. Now we did this on purpose to prevent a detonation, if possible, from the priming system. What I'm going to do is try to simulate a sideways primer. So I have moved my primer side plate all the way out of the way. I'm going to put a primer down the ramp. All right, great. Now, what we have is a sideways primer underneath the primer side plate. And so at this point, you're gonna get a digital clutch message. We're gonna press OK, and we're gonna jog up. Now that relieves the pressure. Now as you see, the primer is stuck completely underneath here. Now, on occasion, you will have to pull this disc off, but alternatively, we can simply jog down and push from underneath on the cam tire to allow the primer to go past and then I use my finger to lift up on the punch showing me the sideways primer where I can reset that primer in place and continue on.
So that's not going to work in every occasion, but that pressing forward of the cam tire saves a lot of time versus taking all of this back apart again. Now, if I was unable to do that because of too much pressure, then I would have to remove the three screws, clear the obstruction, and then reassemble in the same fashion that we just showed you.